Yo, what is going on everyone? Guiding Light here, back with another Ghost of Tsushima video. Now, in this video, I wanted to talk to you guys about some of the upgrade point system and how exactly I suggest that you guys spend some of your skill points and some of your materials early on in the game. Now, I've made it maybe about halfway through the game. I'm about to finish up Act 2. So, after going through some of the boss fights, some of the battles, and some of the missions that are involved in the game, I wanted to give you guys some tips and tricks on how it is that you can go about spending your skill points and spending your supplies, because a lot of the supplies will be a little bit limited early on in the game, and you might be wondering how it is that you want to go about spending your skill points, whether you want to upgrade your sword, your armor, or what abilities to buy. So we're going to be covering all of that here in this video. So we're going to be starting out with the Stealth Dagger. Now the Stealth Dagger is something that you're going to earn probably like on the second or third mission in the game. And this will allow you to sneak up on enemies and actually assassinate them in one hit. Now after playing about halfway through the game, I can tell you guys right now that there's a good chance you will not really need many of the upgrades that have to do with the dagger. So I don't really suggest spending a lot of supplies or wasting any of your iron or anything like that. On these dagger upgrades now although it will allow you to assassinate enemies faster and a little bit more quietly there's really not many points in the game where you're going to really need that and there's some better upgrades that you guys can definitely buy which will help you guys immensely so i definitely suggest upgrading your katana maybe two or three times as many times as you can especially by the second or third boss fight after a couple of the boss fights, the amount of enemies that you're going to have to defeat, as well as the actual bosses themselves, will have a ton of health. So if you do not have the Katana leveled up, there's a very good chance that you might not be able to beat those bosses on the current difficulty that you're on. So the first things first, you definitely want to start upgrading the Katana. That's probably the first thing that I would upgrade. Now, there's also some other upgrades that you guys can get. And as you guys can see, you're going to be able to equip some charms as well. In case maybe you guys didn't know, there's actually a way that you can earn a bunch more of the charm slots. So maybe you only have one or two charm slots available right now. And just really quickly, I want to show you guys how you can actually go about getting some extra charm slots. So as you free roam around the map and as you complete some missions, you're going to come across some of these fox dens. Now, I chose not to go to them straight away because I was just more focused on getting the main missions out of the way. And seeing as you can fast travel to most of them, I figured I'd just come back later and get maybe two or three done at a time instead of stopping at each individual one. But if you do come across a fox den or maybe you didn't realize what they were, you can fast travel back to them at any time. And as soon as you get there, you will see a fox that spawns in. Now, all you really need to do in order to unlock these extra charm slots is follow the fox as soon as it starts to run away. It will actually lead you directly to one of the shrines. And the more shrines that you find, the more of these charm slots that you're going to be able to unlock. Now, the charm slots can help quite a bit because some of the charms will allow you to do extra damage. Some of the charms will allow you to gain more health every time that you heal. And, you know, there's a bunch of charms that you guys can get, which do help your character's abilities. So in case maybe you want to go back to some of these Inari shrines, you don't necessarily have to get them straight away. But once you have two or three on the map, it is a good idea to fast travel to a few of them and get them done very quickly. This will allow you guys to unlock multiple charm slots. So that way you don't just have one or two charms. You'll, you're able to actually stack these up and get even more benefits from the charms that you collect. Now, after going and getting some charms upgrade, what I do suggest is maybe upgrading some of the armor. Now, keep in mind, as you guys go through the story mode, you are going to unlock additional armor. So you don't want to just dump all of your materials into the same armor upgrades because eventually down the road, you're going to unlock other armor and you may want to upgrade some of that armor instead. So the very first armor set that you guys probably have unlocked here is the Samurai Clan armor. So I do suggest going up maybe one or two levels in the samurai clan armor as there are a few boss fights like i mentioned before and during these boss fights there's going to be tons of enemies attacking you at the same time up to 10 or 15 enemies all attacking you at the same time so it is a good idea to upgrade some of that armor so that maybe you don't end up taking as much damage and so that some of these missions aren't as hard to complete so you definitely want to put at least one or two upgrades into that clan armor so that you can reduce the damage by a major amount on all incoming attacks this will also allow you guys to earn resolve every time that you take damage. In case maybe you didn't know what the resolve is, it's those yellow bars which do allow you to heal. So every time you get hit, every so often, you're actually going to earn the ability to heal. And that way, even if you do take a couple hits, you can usually heal yourself right back up and stop yourself from dying, which is one of the most important parts during these missions. 
Now, later down the road in the storyline, without ruining any of the, you know, the actual story, you will eventually unlock the Sakai clan armor. And this is a pretty decent armor set that will actually have a ton of additional abilities. As you can see, it's actually going to allow you to increase your standoff. And the standoffs actually are one of the best parts in the game, in my opinion. And this will allow you guys to actually eliminate additional enemies after a standoff. So after you take out the first guy, there'll actually be a second, sometimes even a third guy that can run up and actually be one hit as soon as you start your standoff. So there are a ton of different times in the game where you're going to have to do a standoff. And the more you upgrade this armor, the more enemies that you will be able to take out within a single standoff. So this can take some of those 10 person battles down to like a seven or six person battle. And it definitely does help out quite a bit. Now that's all we have for the armor upgrades. I want to talk to you guys about some of the equipment upgrades next because you guys may not have realized, but you can actually upgrade the capacity of some of your equipment. So you're going to be able to hold extra arrows, you can hold extra black powder bombs, and you can hold extra of pretty much all of the items in the game. Now I went ahead and got one of the arrow capacity upgrades. This didn't really help me all that much. So unless you're really going out of your way with the, to use that bow, I don't really suggest using the upgrade points on the arrows. I would much rather have additional smoke bombs or additional stick bombs. These bombs actually do end up being extremely effective in the later missions, especially during some of those harder main story missions because there's huge clusters of enemies. There's a ton of people running at you at the same time. And these bombs can actually be used to eliminate five to 10 enemies at a single time. So these bombs are definitely extremely effective and I would much rather have some of those upgrades over the arrows which are usually only used for like one or two stealth attacks at a time and then you're pretty much done with them. So I would definitely suggest upgrading your capacity for some of these bombs and some of these throwing knives because it's definitely going to help a lot more than the arrow capacity. So in case you guys did not know how to do that, what you need to do is just pretty much go to any local village. And if you go to certain merchants, they're actually going to allow you to upgrade the capacity. And it will take a few materials, but it's definitely worth it in the long run. But now that we've gotten some of that out of the way, guys, we're going to go into the techniques. And I'm going to show you guys exactly which skill trees I've purchased and what I suggest and what I don't suggest buying down the road as you spend some of your skill points. So we're going to start here with deflection. Now, I've, as you guys can see, I've pretty much fully maximized my deflection skill tree and this has actually proved to be quite useful because the more that you can deflect the less damage you're going to end up taking and then you might not even really need some of those armor upgrades in the future or some of those health upgrades because you won't be taking as much damage so i definitely suggest going out of your way to get some of these parry upgrades this is going to allow you to actually uh, block some of the attacks that would usually not be able to be blocked so usually when the X's flash red or blue, those attacks wouldn't have been able to be blocked until you have some of these upgrades and then you're actually able to block them. Now I also highly suggest getting the deflect arrow upgrade as well because later down in the story there's going to be enemies that actually shoot uh, explosive arrows and arrows that are set on fire. So if you can block those, those are extremely deadly and they're going to leave burning damage on you which can really drain your health quickly. So I definitely suggest getting some of those bow upgrades. Now you're also going to want to be able to dodge spear attacks as well as there's a lot of heavy hitters that are going to end up getting through your defenses with those spear attacks and you definitely want to be able to block those. Now as for some of these other evasion techniques that you can learn like the delayed strike and some of like the shoulder charge abilities, I don't really suggest buying these although these are pretty cool and they are going to allow you to knock some opponents down. I don't really think these are all that necessary because I haven't really seen a point in the game where I really needed them. I'll definitely be purchasing them later down the road, but for early on, if you're just wondering what skills to try to buy, you don't really need these that much. Although the perfect dodge is something that could come in handy down the road, it takes quite a bit of skill points to actually unlock that. So you don't really want to be wasting all those points when they could be used somewhere else. Now keep in mind, there's also some of these exploration techniques that you can learn. But I don't really suggest buying these either as they're not going to help you complete the story and they're not really going to help you in combat. So I would suggest either waiting till the end of the game to buy those because you're not really going to be doing all that much exploration. You might be going around free roaming quite a bit, but those techniques are really not going to help you complete the story at all. Next up, we're going to get into some of the stance upgrades. Now, these stance upgrades can definitely come in handy and I would have wished that I had bought some of these abilities earlier on. 
because during some of these boss fights, you're not going to be able to use your smoke bombs, you're not going to be able to use your bow and arrow. So having these techniques during some of the duels or even during some of the boss fights are going to be extremely effective because you won't be able to use those abilities. Now, I highly, highly suggest buying these upgrades here for the water stance because this is going to allow you to defeat shielded enemies a lot easier. So once you have some of these upgrades, you're going to be able to just go straight through the enemy shields by using some of your heavier attacks. And you're also going to be able to defeat the speared enemies a lot easier as well. So I highly suggest buying these upgrades as there's a lot of speared enemies and there's a lot of shielded enemies in the later bit of the game. And having these upgrades is going to make quite a huge difference because you'll be able to get straight through those shields with just a few attacks. And this is also going to stagger the enemies as well. And when you get into those big battles where there's multiple people on you, staggering the shielded enemies can be very helpful because you'll be able to take them out a lot faster and then get onto some of the other enemies. Now, next up, we have our ghost technique. So we're going to start out with the weapon section. Now, we've got the kunai. These things are actually extremely useful. So I highly suggest getting the upgrade to throw an additional knife. This is actually going to allow you to take out two or three enemies at the same time. And honestly, I wouldn't even... Think it's a bad idea to go ahead and max out this upgrade completely because throwing these kunai can actually take out up to four or even five enemies at the same time and it's going to become extremely effective in those bigger battles and you really want to be trying to use your equipment as much as you can especially if you ended up buying some of those upgrades i suggested at the beginning of the video which is going to allow you to have extra capacity as well now next up we have some of these concussive blasts and stuff like that so i don't really suggest buying these because unless you're going to be going out of your way to be a stealthy player unless you're one of the people that really loves stealth and really likes to sneak up on the enemies you really don't need money many of these upgrades and although the explosive shrapnel can become pretty effective if you have some of those other upgrades i mentioned that's going to give you more capacity you're actually not really going to need these as much because these bombs are already extremely deadly and they're going to leave most of the enemies up to like one hit away from death anyway so you don't really end up needing those shrapnels now as for the blinding dust and some of these other upgrades, although they will end up healing you, you won't end up really needing them. And I would rather suggest buying some of the sticky bomb upgrades and make it so that the blast does not affect you at either. So that way you can actually defeat some of these enemies while they are stunned. You're not really going to end up needing many of the other upgrades. And these were the ones that I found to be the most effective. Now onto the evolving tactics. Uh, the very first upgrade we're going to talk about here is the iron will so what this is going to do is it's going to make it so you can spend two revolve points to actually revive yourself from the death now i just recently purchased this upgrade and i have to say it's not what i thought it was going to be and it really doesn't end up being all that effective because although you can revive yourself as you can see it's actually not going to leave you with very much health once you come back up and since you're stunned for the first couple of seconds once you're back up there's a good chance that you're going to end up being killed anyway so this upgrade didn't really seem to do what i thought it was going to do in the long run Another one you don't really want to buy is the standoff streak. As much as it can become helpful, if you remember back to some of the armor we just looked at, you're going to end up getting the standoff streaks anyway, so long as you have this armor equipped. As you can see, one of the special features on this armor is actually to increase your standoff streak. So if anything, upgrading the armor would probably be a better move because at the end of the day, you're going to get the standoff streak upgrade anyway, and you don't really necessarily need it this early on in the game. Although it is one of the coolest features in the game, it doesn't necessarily make much of a difference, especially when you're going to end up getting that armor. Now, as for the archery upgrades, like I said, I don't really use the bow all that much. So unless you're really going out of your way to use the bow, you definitely really don't need these mental focus upgrades. There's a, Most of the time, you're going to end up being able to hit your shots anyway. So slowing down time for that is just not really an upgrade I would suggest. One that I can suggest, though, is the safe landing because there's tons of parts in the game where you have to jump off of high ledges, and this is going to allow you to jump around the map and actually be able to get around a lot faster. Uh, another one that I can suggest, which I, I you can see I haven't purchased yet, is the chain assassination. There's a ton of times where I actually wish that I had this upgrade because there's so many times where I do want to assassinate an enemy, but there's a guy standing right next to him. So if you have this upgrade, it'll actually allow you to take them both out at the same time. Now, as you guys can see, I don't really have any of the focused hearing upgrades because after that very first mission when you unlocked focus hearing, I don't know about you guys, but I've actually never really used it a second time. Although I have gone through some of the missions using stealth, I never really need the focused hearing, so I haven't really gone about getting any of those upgrades. So as for these other upgrades, these are just things you're going to unlock as you complete main story missions. So this, these more aren't really techniques that you need to purchase and instead we will actually unlock them 
throughout the story after completing certain main missions. So other than that though guys, that's pretty much it for this video. That wraps up all of the upgrades and all of the armor upgrades that I do suggest buying early on in the game. So hopefully this video helped you guys out. If it did, definitely be sure to drop a like down below and be on the lookout for some future Ghost of Tsunami videos. But other than that though guys, hopefully you enjoyed and I will catch you in the next one. Peace.